Hi there, and welcome to The History Teacher. This revision video covers early Elizabethan England, 1558 to 1588, of the GCSE Edexcel History 9 to 1 course. Hopefully, you'll also find it useful though, even if you're studying any of the other exam boards, or even if, like me, you just love history. Today we need to deal with Mary Queen of Scots. She's a key figure in Elizabeth's reign and this is because she's Elizabeth's cousin. If you have a look at the House of Tudor, she is the granddaughter of Henry's sister. So if we trace our line back up, we can see that we've got Margaret Tudor, who is the sister of Henry VIII, who then has a son, James V of Scotland, who then has one daughter, Mary Queen of Scots. She was Catholic and had a legitimate claim to the English throne. Mary was inherited the Scottish crown while she was only six days old and was married to the French king Francis II. While Mary was in France, her mother Mary of Guise ruled Scotland in her stead. So she comes up a lot in the Elizabethan module. So we need to know why she's so important. Well, she's Catholic, which meant that many of the Catholic people in the country, including members of the nobility, wanted to support her claim to the throne. They don't like Elizabeth because she's Protestant, so they want to replace her with Mary, who is Catholic. Her claim is strengthened by the fact that she is legitimate. There are no concerns about her legitimacy. However, as you will remember, Elizabeth's legitimacy is in question by Catholics because they see Elizabeth's mother's marriage to Henry VIII as invalid. Mary therefore will always be at the centre of any Catholic plots and conspiracies against Elizabeth. Mary was married to the French King Francis II and when he died in 1560 she returned to Scotland and married Henry Stuart, he's better known as Lord Darnley, and produced an heir whose name is James and he goes on to be James VI of Scotland and James I of England. However, Darnley was murdered in suspicious circumstances possibly Mary was involved this is really hard to prove either way and we don't know but shortly after that Mary married the Earl of Bothwell who was also suspected to have been involved in the murder of her husband. Many Scots assumed that Mary had murdered Darnley and in 1568 they rebelled against her imprisoned her and forced her to abdicate in favour of her son James just a baby at this point. Mary escaped and raised an army but this was defeated at Langside near Glasgow and many subsequently fled to England to ask her cousin Elizabeth to help her against the Scottish rebels. When Mary arrived in 1568 she had created a problem for Elizabeth. If she remained in England she could possibly encourage rebellion and many members of the Catholic nobility believed that they could overthrow Elizabeth and place Mary on the throne legitimately. However, to take action against Mary as an anointed monarch because she's a queen sets a dangerous precedent. If you are the queen you don't want to be arresting and murdering other queens because that might mean that other people see it as an opportunity for them to murder and arrest yourself as queen. Elizabeth kept Mary in prison in England but not in a horrible dingy cell. She was kept in comfort but under guard. She was kept in the homes of nobles whose job it was to keep her safe and to keep her imprisoned. The Scottish rebels demanded that Mary would be handed over and tried for the murder of Darling. So Elizabeth is faced with a number of possible solutions to this. She could help Mary regain her throne, but if she did this, it would anger the Scottish nobility and leave Elizabeth facing a Catholic monarch on her northern border. The old alliance with France between Scotland and France could then be revived to threaten her. Elizabeth doesn't want this because this will create a threat on two fronts in England. She could hand Mary over to the Scottish Lords. Mary was the widow of the French King, Francis II, and her trial and execution by Scottish nobles with Elizabeth's permission could provoke France into an alliance with Spain which could then eventually lead to both countries attacking England at war. Again, not a great solution. She could allow Mary to go abroad which would allow Mary to return to France. She's got loads of family in France so she's going to be able to find her family, the de Guise family and this could provoke a French plot. Once Mary was back with her family they could see this as an opportunity for a power play to remove Elizabeth and place Mary on on the throne of England, thereby increasing the power of the de Guise family. Not something Elizabeth wants again. But finally, her final option is to keep Mary in England. It's 
the best of a bad load of options really. It does have the risk that Catholic plotters might try to overthrow Elizabeth and replace her with Mary as we know that is what goes on to happen but compared to the other three options it's the best of the bad bunch. Another key event in all of this happens in 1568 to 69. A meeting was set up in York to hear the case against Mary. This is all about whether they should be sending her back to Scotland to face trial. The Scottish Lords brought evidence in the form of love letters which were supposedly written by Mary to the Earl of Bothwell and they showed that she had plotted to murder Darnley. Mary said she could not be tried because she was an anointed monarch. This links to the idea that God chooses the king or queen. Those of you who did the Civil War in Key Stage 3, you will remember Charles I used the same defence. He said that he could not be tried because he was chosen by God and she refused to enter a plea unless Elizabeth guaranteed a verdict of innocence, which of course Elizabeth refused to do. The, the meeting didn't reach any conclusions and therefore Mary remained in England. By not handing over Mary, Elizabeth ensured that the Scottish nobility would not imprison or execute Mary which you'll remember she wants to avoid because that sets a dangerous precedent for the way you treat monarchs. The French would be satisfied because Mary is not being sent back to face her death. However, Mary staying in England, she remains a threat to Elizabeth because any plots against her, especially those involving Catholics, would be aimed at removing Elizabeth and placing Mary on the throne. The last important question we need to ask about Mary at this early stage is she is the next legitimate heir to the throne. Even if we take Elizabeth as being legitimate, which most Protestants said she was, the natural thing for Elizabeth to do would be to name Mary as her heir. Now this would have a couple of advantages. One, it would mean that Catholics were happy because they would know that when Elizabeth died, a Catholic monarch would rule. However, it doesn't please English Protestants especially those on her Privy Council, her close advisers. Without the support of them, Elizabeth is already fighting battles against the Catholic nobles who already don't like her. And if she was to lose her Privy Council as well, she would have few supporters left. Also, the prospect of a Catholic heir would, in Elizabeth's death, probably result in a civil war. So Elizabeth is wanting to protect her country. What is really important to remember about Mary is that you might be asked about specific time periods. If you were asked about her in 1558, you can't mention any of the plots which we will go on to talk about later on. You can't even mention her execution. I'll be doing a separate video in a couple of weeks to show how to answer one of these questions. That's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. As a full-time history teacher and examiner, I have little time to dedicate to making these videos. So if you'd like to help me find a bit more time, as well as to get better equipment and software, I'd be really grateful if you'd visit my Patreon page. Link is in the description. Even a small donation would help me, so thank you so much for your support. You can always contact me by email, follow me on Twitter, and don't forget to like and subscribe. And thanks again for watching, and good luck.